The Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for there were not, they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, where, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Agnes Day is a, is a cartoon that we've been putting in the announcement bulletin for some time now. It is a cartoon that speaks to the gospel reading each week, typically with a little bit of humor. And each week it speaks something about what we need to know about who God is and what God is up to. Now those of you who are used to Agnes Day know that the sheep who is on the left is well, not the brightest sheep in the pen, right? The one on the right, the one with the darkened nose, he's a little smarter. He's the one who understands what God is up to. In this cartoon, we hear that God in Jesus Christ offers Peter particularly, but all of his disciples, forgiveness 
and vocation in one fell swoop today. If we get nothing else out of this story, this is the core of what this gospel reading is offering us. You see, the resurrection Lord comes to his disciples. He meets them where they are, back up in Galilee. And he feeds them. He nourishes them. And he gives them clarity about their role. Now, you see and you know that the disciples had gone back home. They'd gone back to the place that was familiar to them. They went to that place that was, well, perhaps we could say more comfortable. But it wasn't just about going back to the, to the family place. It was also about going back to that place where they knew what to do. Back to where their vocation was, their fishing grounds, if you will. But there's one problem. And the problem is that they'd seen too much. They had experienced too much. In some ways, they knew too much. And you can't go back to before knowing Jesus. You can't go back to before experiencing God's presence in Jesus Christ. And so when they came together in their life that day, every time they had shown up after the resurrection, Jesus showed up in their midst. And today when he does, he meets them on the beach and he gives them instructions. And all of a sudden, when they followed the Lord's instructions, their fortune changed. And then he offers them breakfast. And then he tells them about what their future, their vocation is to be. Now, we remember that Peter is the one who, first of all, said, even to death, I will go with you, Lord. And Jesus said, no, it's not going to go that way. And in fact, Peter, on the night of Jesus' betrayal and of his trial on those trumped up charges, Peter it was who denied Jesus three times denied knowing him. Now, in biblical times, if you said something or did something three times, it became irrevocable. You couldn't take it back. It became absolute. And so Jesus, being denied by Peter, well, in that threefold denial, Peter had, had stepped into a space of absolute denial. So today when we hear Jesus coming to the disciples and gathering with them and feeding them and then turning to Peter and asking three times, do you love me? And Peter answers, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. In that threefold blessing, in that threefold questioning, in that threefold reality, what had become absolute and irrevocable earlier is now reversed. Jesus offers forgiveness to one who believed himself unforgivable. Jesus brought him back into the trust of the fold. And so, each week when this cartoon comes out, it often has a little line that isn't part of the cartoon that comes out with it, a little additional commentary. And this week, the line went like this, that awkward moment when you are offered a position in spite of your dreadful performance review. 
Peter had failed in so many ways. Peter had failed over and over, and it wasn't just that night. Peter was kind of a beloved screw-up when it comes to living out following Jesus. And yet today, he's offered the job anyway. He gets the position. And so in the midst of that, What's true for Peter is true for each and every one of the faithful who come after Peter. That indeed, God is continually reaching out to us, continually seeking us out, continually offering us forgiveness, even though our performance is often dreadful. That indeed, in the midst of that, God is offering us forgiveness and reconciliation and new life, new possibilities, indeed offering us a new way of being in spite of how we perform. Yes, we get it wrong. Sometimes we get it very wrong. But there is new hope every day with the risen Christ. cannot go back to that hopelessness before Jesus. It doesn't exist. Now some people call this walking wet. And what they mean by that is that those of us who are baptized into the body of Christ live in such a way that we remember our baptisms every day. We remember that indeed God has claimed us through the waters of our baptism and God has offered us forgiveness and reconciliation and salvation and new life even before we knew we needed it. And in the midst of that, God has laid claim to us in significant ways. Oh sure, we still blow it. Sometimes we blow it over and over again. And every time we do, our performance does not define God's response to us. God is there offering us the job. And what is that job? Well, at the waters of our baptism, our parents make promises. Indeed, Casey and Stacy are going to make promises. Baptismal sponsors are going to make promises. And all of us are going to make promises. And those promises get reiterated when we make affirmation of baptism. Some call it confirmation. You know these. We promise to live among God's faithful people. We promise to hear the word of the Lord and to share the Lord's Supper. We promise to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in what we do and what we say, we promise to serve others following the example of Jesus. And we promise to strive for justice and peace in all the world so that God's love may become manifest everywhere. Indeed, that's the charge to every one of us. That's the charge to Beckett today. And we're all going to make a commitment to help him grow into that. To walk with his parents and his baptismal sponsors as they help him to grow into those promises. Indeed, when any of us fall short, God remains steadfast in God's love. Reaching out to us with forgiveness with life. And so may we each remember this truth of the greatness of God's love. Today and every day.